Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for this uh, latest edition of our live stream Musician Monday from the Musician Treatment Foundation. I'm uh, Dr. Alton Barron. I'm an orthopedic shoulder, elbow, and hand surgeon. I'm the founder and director of the Musician Treatment Foundation, which is a nonprofit dedicated to providing free shoulder, elbow, and hand care for under and uninsured professional musicians. I'm here today with my dear friend, Jonathan Horn, an amazingly talented guitarist who has had some tribulations with his hand. Uh, good evening, Jonathan. How are you? I'm really happy to be here and to, to see you. Yeah, it's really nice to see you, too. Thank you. And we'll, we're going to hear a lot more from Jonathan, both his talent, but also his words. And he's a very thoughtful guy as well. And, and I think it'll be very fruitful for us tonight. Let me just... Um, say that if you want to access any of our previous recordings or um, any, any additional information about our foundation, you can access that at mtfusa.org, our website, or our Facebook page, um, or the uh, or our Instagram site. So uh, any of that is a way to get to us, um, and you can uh, reach me or anyone else about it. And for more information, if you know musicians in need who need our help, we'd be happy to provide that. We have in two and a half years of existence, we've provided over $1 million in free care to um, under and uninsured needful musicians, professional musicians who have uh, been uh, struggling with shoulder, elbow and hand problems. And we're try our motto is to keep the music playing and we're trying desperately to do that, especially during these difficult times for everyone on the planet, but but musicians are especially uh, affected because they're not able to tour, not able to do the live streams that often uh, pay all the bills, and and it's a struggle. And we know that tens of millions of people, more people have lost health insurance, and we know that's an issue at baseline for many freelance professional musicians. So for many of these reasons, um, we uh, are trying to support them, and we would love your support if you're interested, but we also just want your attention and to pay attention and listen to uh, what Jonathan has to say, because he has a lot to say, and he's a very, very wonderful guy. So with that, um, I'd um, like to say that um, Jonathan and I met because of a, uh, a very significant hand injury that he had. And I will leave it at that. And Jonathan, you can tell us as much or little about that as you want. But it's also your background. I know you're you're obviously a, a, a extremely talented guitarist and songwriter and composer, but you also uh, play other instruments and so forth. So just tell us a little bit about your musical history, and then and then what led you led us to come together. Okay, thank you. I guess luckily the, the best thing about my, my my studies in music is that I really like improvising. So that's helped me a lot through the journey of, uh, of injuries and uh, adapting to change. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say that's the fun, my fundamental interest in, in music and how improvising relates to every, every moment we have on this planet. Um, mm -hmm. I've been, I'm a self-taught guitar player. Um, I started when I was eight years old. Uh, I had a teacher who taught me how to figure out stuff off of records by ear. Mm -hmm. And, um, I moved to Austin at the age of 20 to be uh, moved with a random band, actually. We all moved from Kentucky. And uh, Thor was, your cousin Thor was one of the first people I met uh, eat, eating a taco and talking about wearing the, he told me to wear Converse All-Stars if I wanted to play it. So, so I'm Thor. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so Austin was just really wonderful, uh, just meeting the right people almost immediately. And uh, in the 16 years I've lived in Austin, uh, I try to keep a steady diet of being, being in at least five groups at a time um, with only one or two of the groups being like touring uh, around the world. The rest are just Austin based projects, um, all sorts of different types of music. But my main interests are um, uh, and kind of weirdo jazz and instrumental rock and bluegrass and uh, modern minimalism and um, so it's, I tried to bring all these different groups really helped with uh, satisfying all those different interests and all the amazing personalities that are in the music scene in Austin and all the experience that everybody has there to share with each other. Um, so I, it was, I was very busy until the, the injury was in uh, November of 2017. I uh, just finished making two records. Uh, right before that, uh, 
two weeks before the injury, I just had a tour of Europe and 10 different countries. Mm -hmm. Felt like I was at a new level of when yeah. my playing and improvising and phrasing. And, um, I was actually kind of stunned how easily it came to me at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe the injury was kind of a lesson in that too. Um, and then, it, uh, then my my tendon severed and my ring finger and my my fretting hand. Um, I'm left-handed. I play guitar right-handed. Um, and uh, I, unfortunately, it was uh, it, the place I went to initially said that it was broken, so it it went unattended for. Before we met. Um, but I remember two days after the injury, I went and played a concert with the splint on the finger, wow. just not using the finger. Yeah. So I was just determined to make it. So tell me, how did the actual avulsion, you avulsed a tendon, and how did that actually happen? Uh, the finger just got pulled back in an extreme yeah. manner, and uh, I thought yeah. it was broken. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it hurt, and I, I, was, I, I had a fear that it might affect my playing forever. I know the was. Yeah. Sure. And it was how many weeks before I got to see you? I believe it was right around a month. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's really important because there are certain injuries that can that can kind of hang out and be fine and you can fix them. There, there are certain types of ligament tears that I can fix, oh, I don't know, three months later, six months later. Um, there are others that are not um, so amenable to waiting. And the flexor tendons, the ones that curl the fingers, which you need so importantly to do your many and varied um, uh, notes and so forth and chords, it, that, when you pull that down, it's it is a long excursion. The muscle has a long excursion to be able to pull it down, and and it and there's a big strong muscle that you have down in the form. It pulls it way away, and everything starts contracting. And the sheath, the the, the gliding pathway that there's is there for the tendon, closes down and scars in, and everybody scar scars differently. And, but we know that we don't have that much time to wait uh, for these injuries. Uh, and four weeks is already too long. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad I met you. Because, <laughs> yeah, I think a week after we met, you scheduled that surgery. Yeah, yeah, we knew we had to do it. But, it, you know, look, it's been a struggle. And uh, you've been amazing in terms of the way you've weathered it. And, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit. I mean, you've weathered it, obviously, physically. It's not. You know, it's not your heart. Your heart's working fine. You know, your eyes are working fine. But your hands are what you need. You need to 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 make beautiful music, and and that immediately was shut down, um, at least from from the way you've been playing and and what you could do. And and what was the early? What were the early feelings you had about that? And then how did that evolve in terms of your headspace and psychologically? Oh wow! I would say the well, the first few months were definitely just uh, focused on recovery, and mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, obviously, you know, very uh, common and intense physical therapy kind of mm -hmm. became my my second job, mm -hmm. and um, I just focused on that. And then, I guess my first surprise was um, how uh, it affected the pinky, uh, which. Yeah was just part of the equation that I didn't yeah. consider it being weakened so much. Yeah. So um, I, I kind of just focused on on um, the, the, my first two fingers, my, my middle finger, my index finger. And mm -hmm. luckily, they retained all the strength. And yeah. just the fact that it's my dominant hand, too. Um, yeah. So I, I, I definitely missed chords. And I use, I use really wide chord voicings because uh, few of yeah. the groups i mean i'm the only stringed instrument player so i right. tried to play simultaneous parts and have wow. big big large wide chords um, yeah interesting uh, but luckily i have a lot of a lot of past experience with open tunings and alternate mm -hmm. tunings and independent lines there was enough there to where i was able to create something mm -hmm. and um luckily there were no tours uh yeah. in the near future 
uh, and luckily there were a few recording sessions. So yeah. the, the, the experiences themselves and mentally it was really stressful and difficult, um, but I gave it my best and to have the opportunity to go back and listen to those recordings coupled with the feedback of, of people I work with made me realize that even though it, the mental process is a lot more challenging than it had been, uh, the sound wasn't that different. Hmm. All those years I spent trying to put my personality into the way I, yeah. I was there. Hmm. Yeah. And if it was a little more difficult feeling while yeah. I made the music. Yeah, that's interesting. That's amazing. I mean, I remember having a lot of phone calls and, and, and meetings with you during this period. And one thing I was struck by is your really extraordinary ability to to weather it, to, to weather it. I, and I, I, I know this, having treated thousands of musicians, everyone is not always in that kind of headspace. Everyone responds differently. We all respond differently to stress, but that's a massive amount of stress. And and I know that you had to, you, you were feeling like you'd taken it to a whole nother level. You had that huge tour that was so successful and productive. And then, um, and then suddenly it was, and, and I know that you weathered it well. Yeah, you did a lot of recording during that time and so forth. But so did, did what it, your fellow musicians, how did they respond to you in this injury? Did they just basically say, bring it on, whatever you've got? And were they very understanding? Or did some people turn away from you and say, look, we've got to have somebody who's got all their digits and working properly? I mean, what did that feel like? I know you're in a loving, you know, arena in Austin, but still. Right. Well, the, I guess the only, the only difficulty was the group that I wrote all the guitar, my own guitar parts for, uh, where it was just me and drums. That was, that was really difficult. And I, I had to retire those songs. Some of them I still can barely play. Um, but luckily, mm -hmm. uh, nobody replaced me or gave up on me and, um, mm -hmm. no concerts were, were canceled. Um, I mean, there were rumors going around that I wasn't playing guitar anymore. <laughs> yeah, boy. I mean, all I can do is laugh at that and right. say, no, no, I'm just not playing every night like I used to, which is probably healthy for me anyways after doing that for 10 years, you know, getting some, a little more sleep. You know? Right. No, but, of course. Of course. So um, I'm going to put in a plug. When I met you, I think you were working at, at Waterloo Records. Yes. And um, and I had come in and I bought some records from you, but um, John Kuntz is the owner, longtime owner, and another icon of Austin who was who was running Waterloo Records for or owned Waterloo Records for many years. But if I'm not mistaken, he he has it, most, if not all, the people working there are also musicians, and he tries to support the musician community that way too, and he provides some level of health insurance, right? What is your impression about what is your impression about health insurance with regard to your fellow uh, freelance musicians? Oh gosh, well, it's it's un undervalued, unfortunately, by um, yeah, not not by the musicians themselves, but just by the most jobs don't don't offer what what John has offered, yeah. um, and in terms of just providing that for all of his full time employees, um, it's and I was I, it'd be a different situation. I mean, I, I, that when something like that happened to me, um, you know, I I realized how was important how important it was that I had it. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and yeah, I just wanted to throw that in because that's one of the big conundrums uh, and why we, why our foundation exists for that very reason, because I think the numbers pre COVID, the numbers were about 40% of freelance musicians, professional musicians lack any or adequate health insurance. And that's a huge number. And, and it's, difficult to to accept that when we know how much non-musicians like me and the rest of the, the planet need so much and respond so much to music and how important that is for our own wellness 
and and health and mental and even physical health. And so, you know, what you do and the way you're able to keep going is pretty extraordinary. And and that's testimony to I think your your soul and your 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 depth of feeling. And you had a lot of support people around. I know your your family was very supportive and friends. And um, let's see, you know, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break because we're getting some sort of feedback right now. OK, we're back. Jonathan has headphones on now. So now he looks really official as if he's going to be doing the recording studio. So actually, um, speaking of that, just. Just to, to break us up so I don't have to hear myself talk too much, um, pick up your guitar and, and give us a little improv. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Nice. Bravo. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I love I, I love the way you um, I love the way you brought your your little finger over to support your ring finger uh, for Thanks. a couple of those. That was pretty cool. Now, let me. Ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this about about being left handed. Um, mm -hmm. do you think given the the amazing work, do you think there's a difference? Um, uh, what what? If you're left-handed, could did you have the option? Did you make the conscious choice to play right-handed, or or what? Uh, I was handed a, a right-handed guitar. Uh, it was in the attic, and uh, I just started playing it that night. Mm -hmm. And then, then when I started trying to con conscientiously develop a style, after learning licks off of recordings for ten years, mm -hmm. um, I realized that I had an idea at least and and letting my quote unquote dominant hand dominate the playing with mostly poly <laughs> polyrhythmic being able to note notes without picking them and then yeah. letting the right hand do alternate patterns and rhythms and things like that yeah cool cool yeah so you were really you were conscious of of your left dominant hand remaining dominant in a certain way that's cool yes yeah. um that's cool um Okay, so let's see. So, when you um, when you had the um, w when you had your injury and you had to, what it, what did it feel like? And this applies to people who aren't even musicians. When you have an injury that that clearly alters your use patterns, that alters your brain chemistry. And what were you finding as you were trying to? adapt and adapt your playing and you had to let go of some of the things you were doing so freely and you had to find new ways to make it sound cool interesting especially since you like improv and so forth and so was that just something that you just had to see what it would do and let it go and then just real time sort of improv improv or yeah, I, a lot of it, a lot of the recovery has been focused on uh, trying to go back and tie up all the loose ends, so to speak, like trying to pl try and play everything that I used to play. Uh -huh. And um, that, that was the focus for many, many months uh, mm -hmm. after uh, each each operation and uh, each step closer to, to reconstructing everything. Um, yeah. And, but at a certain point, I, I thought, 
well, I, I already did that. So what's the point in that? Why, why hmm. spend all of my energy on that when I can just, I, at a certain point, I just decided I just needed to keep creating stuff. And I found, uh, especially in, in the experience of the, the ensembles where I, I get to do the accompaniment with another chordal instrument. So there's that support. Mm -hmm. And and when it's time to improvise melodies or solos, um, I found that the lack of uh, familiar muscle memory has created um, melodic structures and patterns that I always wanted to do, but wasn't quite brave enough to do, <laughs> to, to be hmm. perfectly honest. Yeah. And actually kind of, yeah. th th there was some sort of unfamiliarity, but... Um, of, of patterns but familiarity enough with the instrument after 29 yeah. years of playing at this point yeah. where um i was able to create something new that i didn't think i could do before yeah. all this happened so mm -hmm. that's kind of my focus now if, if that answers the question at all no it absolutely does it absolutely does um yeah so it 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 allowed for you to kind of expand the way you were thinking rather than trying to work so hard at getting back to what you could do before just let it go and see and it maybe open up new horizons that you wouldn't have otherwise had because you had such a a way already exactly yeah yeah interesting yep. i hadn't thought about that well we know that's um you seem you know very very peaceful always and very at peace and maybe that's been part of it because we know when we use our hands differently uh that stimulates different parts of our our somatosensory cortex oh, our wow. brain and uh, one thing i'll throw out that people i think one of the reasons why i know that musicians have like all of us have uh you know, spectrum of, of feelings about the world, about themselves and so forth. But one of the things we know, the reason making music is so good for our psychological well-being is that that 60 percent of our higher cortical neurons, our somatosensory cortex, which is the, the part that grew when we started making tools as as uh, cavemen, um, 60% of all the neurons up there are devoted only to our hands. Wow. So it's so uh, profoundly important to our brain health and therefore our wellness and our mental health. And, wow. and to, to lose that, I, you know, you, you are unique. I mean, there's a lot of people that I've treated and know and have even heard about who, when they lose that capacity to just, um, produce the music that they want and need to produce, it can be devastating psychologically. And, and the fear of that can be devastating psychologically. And it fascinates me that, that all the way through this, you've, you've, you have fascinated me because you have been so centered and able to weather it. And you had a far more, and it's not completely over, but you had a far more arduous journey than most people who have a straightforward injury that's just able to be fixed and then go on about your business and get back to everything. And so, I, I mean, I commend you for that. I mean, you're a special person. I knew that already, but it, it, it's very important. I think that, that people understand that. And one reason I think is what exactly what you explained that you already are, you're big in the improv. You're, you're big in just not, not, I mean, how would you define improv for you? Um, using whatever thoughts and tools at my disposal to meet whatever is in front of me at the moment. It's like, pro to me, it's problem solving communication, but mm -hmm. also uh, it's connected with, um, you know, considering the, the environment around you too. It's not just the, yeah. it's based on like a selfish decision. Um, yeah. So that's why, that's why I like the creation of music that way. It reminds me of how I want to live each moment. If I, I, um, unless, even if something bad's happening, I feel like I have to improvise. You know? <laughs> right. Well, that's a good point. I mean, I love the the idea what you said about about solving a problem musically. I mean, that's cool. That that uh, whole idea is really cool to me. And and yeah, because I mean, it's not a problem in the sense of you know having a flat tire, but it's a problem right. where it, what it feels like th that you uh, that you've got some musical constraint and you have to solve that. Solve that problem. That's cool. Uh, yeah. thank you. Um, what would be um, 
Like, where do you see now? Now, have you? I know you play and, and play around with some other instruments and play other instruments and so forth. Has that changed for you? Having a hand injury, have you felt like you wanted to explore other instruments more, or is it just part of the way you've been and will continue to be? Uh, it's definitely. Uh, I can. I feel like I'm better at tra- music instruments I'm untrained on now um uh, just because uh, how it's affected my playing on guitar uh and, and the fact that um I think about what I'm doing a little bit more before I do it as opposed mm-hmm. to just being able to do it when on the spur of the second uh mm-hmm. so now if I want to play a drum beat it's actually a little more in time or if I want to play the saxophone I think a little bit more about playing the notes in perfect well, perfect tuning or um uh, it's it's less just about being wiggly and going for it than <laughs> like a, it's, I, i'm thinking like two steps ahead now yeah um, which is nice yeah that's interesting that's that's a that's a great uh, observation um what do you want to play for us now oh my word i should uh i'll uh just change the tuning real quick and make something up i guess <laughs> Wow, I've never played in this tuning ever in my life, so that'll be fun. This is just cool. for you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I hope my phone doesn't die. We'll see. Alrighty. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. I love Thank that. You. I love that tuning. Yeah, that was really nice. Oh, let's see. So, um, so what would you, uh, let's, let's, let's now fast forward into the middle of this pandemic that we've got. Um, you know, uh, gosh, I mean, I don't know what has been, what do you think has been the effect of the pandemic Let's let's take your hand away from it. Let's take your injury away from it. What has been your, you know, a few of your most pointed or major observations during this time as as a musician who's used to touring, who's used to the intensity of so much togetherness and performance, live performance, you you do that constantly or historically did that constantly. What what has been your take on that? Wow. Well, I'm I'm really happy that um all the people that i i know in in the scene and and respect have all been really responsible and patient with it you know uh just not endangering other people's health and their health first and foremost which is probably my favorite thing on top of it all um i i definitely uh i think it definitely uh, on the other side brings to light the uh, economic necessity of playing live and touring um just yeah. because the music industry is just getting tougher and tougher every year for for musicians um mm-hmm. i mean there's incredible record labels out there and uh, there's incredible managers out there and uh, there's incredible venues out there mm-hmm. um, but i think at this point the goal is just to break even when it comes to, to money mm-hmm. um, um but uh, I think goodness for technology and people are making beautiful records right now. Nobody's in the same city mm-hmm. and uh, people are writing and practicing and taking on new uh, endeavors. And um, uh, it, I, I, I guess I'm just trying to focus on staying healthy 
um, yeah. And, yeah. and taking care of people myself. I mean, I can certainly see how it could create creatively create uh, new paradigms, new new relationships, new transatlantic and, and cross-cultural and, and global relationships through this, this you know, through the live streaming concept and, and how people can get together and make music and collaborate and so forth. I can, I can see that. And so that maybe that's a silver lining to the horrors of losing almost all their income, all your income. I mean, that's, that's really, and, and, what I am, you know, I just sometimes lie awake and I think about is how many musicians just have to give up the ghost and just have to say, you know what, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to my day job or another, uh, or, or go to another job. I just can't do this. And, and that's, that's tragic because we need as much music as possible in the world. And, and I, I sure hope, and we've also lost venues, as you know, right. the venues, oh, uh, uh, the venues get taken over by, you know, Big box, whatever uh, uh, you know, companies that that are just moving in, whatever their retail things are, and so forth. And it's and it's tragic there too because these venues are iconic. They're important. They give everybody a sense of of community and togetherness. And to lose those, even one, is tragic. And to lose oh, yeah. fifteen is is devastating. And it sure so, is. it's hard. Um, it's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you and I will get together soon with Cousin Thor, and oh, yes. uh, I wait to hear you guys make some music and and be in the be actually in the same room with you. Um, I thank you so much for your time and your talent, and I would I would I, I know I'll see you soon and give you a big hug. Uh, that's the one big thing that's been hard for me is is a lack of hugs these days. Me but too. Um, yeah, but um, but let's at least uh, we'll plan to get together soon, and I'd love for you to close us out with some with some music of of your of your desire. Oh wow! Cool. We'll see you soon. Thank you. See, you. I look. I can't wait to see you. Okay. Another random tuning, I guess. I like this one. All right. Bravo. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.